It's Sunday, the 28th of March, and today's show is about recalibrating your message. Today, we're going to be looking at how you can reinvent your business, giving you two case studies of how Ernesto and Dave have reinvented our very own businesses, and also how big players like KLM are creating empathy rather than selling and losing customers. Coming live from Houston with Ernesto Verdugo, and live from Dubai with Dave Crane, you are watching The Toilet Paper Diaries. Hi Dave, no idea what happened there with the video, it got stuck at some point, but uh, I guess it's Sunday, <laughs> so decided not to work today. How are you? So is, well, hold on, is Sunday stuck video day? Is that how it works? <laughs> <laughs> From now on, Sunday is stuck video day, and tomorrow is challenging what, what video day. What that video? It keeps on getting, I mean, it's, it's not showing up, so, so let me see if I'll take it off. Uh, anyway. How are you? We are uh, right now on episode 10. I am uh, really very excited that we have done so far 10 episodes. Uh, two weeks ago, we didn't even know that we were going to be doing this. And uh, I think today is going to be very interesting because we're going to be talking about how to recalibrate your message uh, post COVID-19. So possibly, Dave, you can uh, elucidate what do we mean with recalibrate your message. Yeah, I mean, I think right now we're going for a period where every single person had a big business, whether it's bricks and mortar or digital, it was used to an old way of doing things, which until we had the reset, which is what we've called, or actually you created the, the phrase for what we're going through with the coronavirus, where everything shut down and a reset button's being pressed on the entire world. So all businesses that used to exist are on hold. Some are doing well if they're already geared towards digital and they work from home. But for most businesses that have a, a hybrid of on and off uh, line business, or certainly ones like restaurants where you've got to go directly in to enjoy the experience of doing it, they're going for a real change. So changing your message is part of changing your style, changing your model, and changing your route to market. And it might mean in many other cases, changing your client base as well. I'll be going through that with a specific um, uh, rundown of the four things you need to use to be able to reinvent your business. But the idea of changing your category, changing your message is so key before you go to market. So yeah, that's uh, that's great. I think it's going to be a, a, a great show. Uh, today, one of the things that we realized it was uh, that even though everybody's in lockdown, there's a ton of things also happening uh, right now also around the world. I actually saw when I woke up this morning that uh, President Trump had just issued a bounty of $15,000 dead or alive for uh, President Nicolas Maduro of Venezuela. 15 million, million, not thousand, oh, million. Oh, that's correct. That is million, $15 million just for him. However, uh, he's actually have a 50, 55, zero million for four of his closest uh, ally, uh, 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 but you know, people working with him. So I think, uh, yeah, even though uh, things are right now in lockdown, uh, the world keeps on moving. What's on your end? What have you seen uh, which is uh, news and interesting? Okay, I mean, certainly in the UAE, United Arab Emirates, um, we're still on lockdown. We've been given an extension of lockdown until the end of the week. Um, but various government organizations and banks are working as hard as possible to make it easy for people. So businesses that are set up in free zones are, gi are given a, a six month um, um, stay of payment uh, for their loans or for their rents, which is really good because obviously it's going to take a while, especially for small players who haven't got a big stock of cash to be able to get their act together. Um, the in charge for the government schools, I've got to find out whether my daughter qualifies for that. If not, then she doesn't go back to school. Um, they're being told for the third term, there's no payment. You don't have to pay school fees for the third term because um, we don't know when that's going to start. But it's going to be very interesting to see if that's a thing that spreads to all the other schools because schools still have bills to pay, same as we do with rent and everything else. Um, but, I mean, most people will be thinking, why am I, why am I paying full school fees if we're not going in and using the facilities? 
kids are at home using our home facilities how can you charge the same amount now in the uae predominantly people pay for private schooling you've got to pay to get your kids to go to school there's no unless you are from the uae and you're a national you don't get it for free um and i realize that's different for many other countries but certainly it feels like the government are trying as best as they can uh, to make it easier for people to survive during this very hard time yeah that is uh, that is something that i haven't even thought about i mean how uh yeah because of course i mean private schools are getting paid and right now people kids are staying in school what's going to happen with that that's an interesting point um you know what i was thinking also uh which yesterday got me thinking i was watching a video from uh kevin bacon that he has in ted and uh possibly you are uh pretty much familiar with the um six degrees of separation which is a theory that everybody in the world is connected through six degrees and uh, right now, I was just thinking, well, indeed, I mean, if we are connected to six degrees to any person, my question is, who do I know? Do I know anybody that is actually tested positive for the coronavirus? And uh, I started going around and I had actually, fortunately, at this point, I had a difficulty actually uh, pointing out more than two people uh, close to two or three degrees of me uh, that are... Uh, in in uh, that have tested positive but i have the feeling that the closer that it gets to where we are because what uh, they were saying was that the 7th of april was going to be the worst time here in houston we were going to be keeping uh, an eye on that so one of my recommendations is to make sure that you uh, keep an eye not only on your close circle but also on your two or three degrees so that you you know you're empathic with everybody and this is just uh, something that i that i was thinking today I agree. I mean, it's natural for us to want to get closer to each other, to protect each other, but we really have to get closer and protect via video screen if you want to do it effectively. Right now, hugs and kisses and, and, and meeting with people to share, con to share ideas and share sympathy is the wrong thing to do. Because I do know somebody, and I do know a family that's been affected by this. I won't mention who they are, but it's a, a massive challenge, and, and, and I feel for everybody involved. Um, but remember, the virus is very strange in the fact that it does sit there and it's unaware. You don't know for up to 24 days. You can show no symptoms and then it can suddenly pop out. And I watched a very interesting uh, TED talk this morning all about the source of the, the coronavirus and the nature of it and what it does. And what the, um, the presenter was saying was she believes that the more that we're pushing up into the mountains and cutting down rainforests and, and expanding and doing climate damage, uh, we are going to reveal more creatures that we just haven't been in contact with. And so as they come out, the natural thing is for people to eat them. Uh, and that's where we got the coronavirus from. From It was a, meant to be from a, a market in Wuhan where somebody was eating something or somebody was uh, brought some, some animal uh, that was infected. And that had a knock on effect of everybody. And that's, that's where it came from. I mean, eating yeah. bats, eating chimpanzees and all sorts of stuff like that, which many people do around the world. Um, they carry all sorts of diseases, especially dangerous to humans, because the coronavirus isn't dangerous to, to dogs or other pets, as far as I know right now. Yeah, I am uh, getting here a message from uh, uh, Frank Mulcahy. He's telling us that he knows actually eight people that tested positive uh, in his oh uh, surrounding. Well, it will be interesting I, uh, while we are here, if you let us know, anybody else which is watching live the show that can let us know where... Uh, how close they are in uh, how in in uh, in the six degrees of separation. Anyway, let's just uh, can we just say one thing, Anesta, before we move on? That yeah. being being positive does not mean that it's a death sentence. What positive means is that you've shown symptoms, and the symptoms that we look up look for are first of all uh, dry coughing, uh, consistent dry coughing for an hour. So, like for instance, during the show when we clear our throats or sneeze, that's not necessarily anything apart from one of many other viruses that might be dancing around. So it's that, that uh, an hour of dry coughing with no mucus, that can happen maybe three times a day, plus also your body temperature goes up to a point that if anybody touches your chest or touches your back, it feels really hot. These are the two things that people look for. So a lot of people will have it, get tested positive, but they actually won't feel much of it at all. They might have a little bit of a cold, but what you've got to do is basically isolate yourself for the seven days for the symptoms to disappear, and the people that live in the house of you should do 14 days to make sure that whatever they have has come and gone as well. 
So being positive and being um, and being shown that you've got it is not the end of the world, but it is very important you do not share it with anybody else and you self-isolate to get through it as fast as you can. Exactly. Well, I mean, I was, uh, I, I was uh, sort of laughing a moment ago because it's true. I mean, right now, my uh, concern is every time that I clear my throat or every time that I, you know, cough because uh, of whatever reason, I'm going to panic. And I, I think that's just something that, uh, that I think it happens to everybody. Does it happen also to you? Yeah, it does. I mean, I, I went through it a lot worse before um, because uh, literally until you know more about it. I mean, right now in Dubai, it's, it's kind of winter. And so you've got a conflict as if the temperature and the weather is getting warmer. You're fighting against air conditioning, which you've just switched back on again. So you end up getting silly, silly colds, silly versions of the flu from the air conditioning cleaning it out and, and bacteria that's in and walking in and out of buildings. Typical for me up until about two, three weeks ago when everyone started panicking before the lockdown is I'd walk into a shopping mall and suddenly going from the heat outside into the, the super cold of a shopping mall and start sneezing. You should see the faces on people when that happens. And it's not great. So I became very aware of that and very aware to make sure when I walked in, I tried my best not to sneeze. And of course, it's an unconscious thing. So it can happen. So being aware that your normal colds, your normal aches and pains and runny nose and all these other things don't necessarily mean it's a coronavirus. Do your homework online, find out what it is, um, and don't bother the hospitals if you can avoid it. The pharmacies have got loads of things that they always have. For, for drying up flus and colds. Correct. Okay, so now let's try to uh, move on because I think this is something that uh, everybody has on their mind right now. And uh, well, right now I'm very excited uh, because uh, besides, I mean, we, I mean, Dave and I, I think that we're, what we're doing here is it's just uh, uh, also we're trying to let everybody uh, know that we're there for them. I believe that in these times. Uh, you know, new leadership emerges. We have been possibly under the radar for many people uh, on what we are doing. And um, we just want to make sure that uh, that you know that we are actually there. And because of this show, there was also now another spin-off for a show, which is also going to be happening, which is called uh, Prepare to Unmask, which uh, I'm going to be doing. And also Dave, uh, Dave is uh, going to be helping us on that. It's going to be called prepare for unmasking. And uh, this is something that uh, I believe is very important. Right now, if uh, we remember that uh, story of Wayne Gretzky, he always said, well, we are, I'm not playing towards where the ball is or where the puck is. I play toward where the puck is going. And we, of course, have to think, well, possibly it's going to be the 13th of May, possibly it's going to be the 1st of June, whatever it is, uh, there's going to be an after uh, and that is just so incredibly important that we start preparing for this after. We're going to come out of this and uh, we have to know exactly what's, uh, what's going to be happening. So what Dave and I have been doing, and I think it's incredibly interesting, is just to see how people have been reacting. So we have those which are the, uh, you know, the, the people which are the optimists, which are saying, well, you know, this is not going to last that, that long or this is, uh, I'm not really going to be paying attention. This is a hoax or whatever it is. I mean, we have different different people and different reactions. But right now, everybody's actually realizing that this is very close and this is very serious. So you need to basically be, uh, you need to be realistic, not, uh, not uh, you know, not be negative or be positive or whatever. Be realistic and uh, don't be lethargic and don't just wait for nothing to happen because I know already people which are coming up from their own uh, well, uh, you know, from their own uh, good to try to actually help people. And I think that's basically the approach. So there's two ways of seeing uh, this. You have to see, well, actually there's three ways. You have uh, pre-corona, what was happening, what you were doing before, you have the during, which is what is happening right now, and then you're going to have to work with what is going to be happening uh, in the future. And this is the reason why we, de we decided to actually call this episode Recalibrate Your Business, your, Recalibrate Your Message, because the way that you're coming across in social media, the way that you're going to be coming across in social media afterwards, the, the message that you're going to be telling to your customers, to your prospects, has to change. Am I right, Dave? I agree with you completely. 
and uh, I'll be going through the steps of that for every business uh, later on in today's show. Um, taking that actual area, I mean, your expertise, Ernesto, I want to ask you, your expertise is in about marketing and about reverse engineering success business uh, strategies. So for the last couple of years, we've worked together on this. Um, your business, Speak Internationally, has been about getting people to who are speakers who want to launch themselves on the international markets and get them to create incredible showreels all around the world as part of your business travel club. Now, people can't travel. I know you're the, the, the 237th, 47th most traveled person on the planet, but when your business model is about creating showreels and teaching speakers how to market themselves by traveling around the world and being shown to be international, what do you do with your business? Well, I mean, I uh, I am a fast action taker, and I, of course, as I was saying, I always play not towards where the puck is, but towards where the puck is going, and uh, that for me it's uh, it's incredibly important because I know now. I mean, everybody's saying, well, you know, you have to go and start doing webinars, and you have to do this, and you have to do that, and I agree to a certain extent. I agree that you're going to have to think how to do uh, things differently. But more importantly, it's not what you have to do. You don't have to think what you have to do, but you have to start thinking right now who you want to be. Your branding is going to have to change no matter what. Your branding needs to change. Right now, people don't want inspiration. They don't want uh, motivation afterwards uh, of whatever you're going to be doing. They want solutions. So the problem is, what problems do you solve? That's just the absolutely most critical question that you need to ask yourself. You need to uh, start thinking that you have to switch your message into uh, learning of what happened with the uh, toilet paper uh, buying rush. Suddenly, I mean, because there was some sort of scarcity, everybody wanted to have the toilet paper. The question that I pose to you is how can you make yourself desired as much as people desire toilet paper. I mean, you have to say, you, you have to, how can you make your customer think of yourself? Oh my goodness, right now, uh, Ernesto is the person that I need to work with, or Dave is the person that I need to work with, or Tommy or Frank or whoever it is, doesn't matter. How can you position in your mind as that? And I think that's why this time that we are here uh, in, um, in, in, in lockdown, it's very important because Obviously, we need to find out ways for people to see that we are leaders, for people to see that we are there to support them. And uh, let me just uh, quickly show you a, a video uh, of uh, what a Sumba teacher is uh, was doing yesterday in... Uh, in, in, in uh, <laughs> so as, uh, as you can see on that video, uh, she's doing the classic one house and she's just playing the music very loud to everybody in the, uh, in the neighborhood to actually follow the Zumba class. I think that's just absolutely genius. It's just complete repositioning, it's complete reinventing. And of course, I mean, right now that video in Instagram has gone viral. So uh, when we uh, were thinking, well, you know, we know that this is going to be happening. We see people that are not doing anything, people which are just basically hiding in their uh, own homes, people which are helping and uh, people which are uh, making a positive change, or at least they think that we think that we're doing a positive change like ourselves by basically being in the front line. And that I think is one of the things that I am changing completely. I am basically helping uh, people change their message for the not what they were doing because what they were doing afterwards is one thing right now their message needs to be different their message and their branding needs to be different and the uh, in the future their message is going to have to change so this is exactly how i reinvented my my own uh way of doing things and uh, i'm also helping other people actually doing that can we just make a point of saying one thing, which is I feel for all the care workers, all the health workers who don't have a luxury of having this conversation about reinvention, the people who are working in shops, the people who are working in pharmacies, the people on the front line in hospitals, doctors, nurses, logistics people. I mean, they're busy, they're working, they're getting paid, but they're putting themselves in real danger to make sure that everything comes together. So the luxury we have of sitting at home and reinventing our business 
is is paled into insignificance compared to what these guys are going through and we should always be um respectful of that saying that with a friend of ours we know he's got an online ordering business with for teas and coffees and he's making an extra ten thousand dollars per week as a direct result so well done to him so it's not all doom and gloom if you get it right and you've got it right now then you can start making money straight away but you should also look to where things are going in the future i think you can make a huge impact and reinvent your business and i'll be sharing with you exactly how to do that a little later on yeah uh, let me just uh, show you a couple of uh, a couple of examples of uh, they are just obviously to to laugh a little bit with it but i think it's it's uh, it's an interesting thing how uh, you know create the creativity from people and how this message that i'm actually sharing with you it's uh, already arriving into the consciousness of the uh, of the uh, rest of the people they are saying well you know there's a before and there's an after master word was uh, mastercard was together now it's master uh, uh mastercard this is uh, it's separate uh in the in the case of the olympics i mean you have also the olympics were all together now it's all separate now all of course all of these um different examples are uh just to 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 laugh a little bit but i i think there's an important point that we can learn from it i think i have another another example here oh yeah i have their mcdonald's so now it's uh, also separate so my message to you is how are you going to set how, how are you gonna communicate your message so let's go by steps i think uh step number one is to uh, think about uh, what you're going to be doing right now. So right now, Dave and I, the, the, what we are doing is we are trying to uh, have a, uh, you know, we, we want to be on the front line. We want to be helping people with this, uh, with this show. We want to be uh, empathic. We want to give you uh, some news and, and, and everything. Let me show you how KLM is um, uh, actually doing it. It's just, I'm just going to let it play for a moment. And uh, and then we will we will come back and Dave and I will discuss it. Yeah. When will we share precious moments? Slecht nieuws over KLM. Veel uh, vluchten van en naar China werden geschrapt en ook op andere routes werden minder mensen vervoerd. This deadly contagion is continuing to spread across the globe. The airline industry taking a devastating hit. Today we are facing one of the largest crises in the history of our company. Let's stay united. United we stand, divided we lose. There goes my heart beating, and you are the reason. So here, uh, here the, the 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 whole point of what they're trying to to do is first of all they're making their employees the superheroes. They are talking about uh, being united. They're sharing some incredibly uh, beautiful vi videos and uh, pictures online of uh, how they are providing masks and uh, every single thing that every establishment of KLM is doing around the world. Instead of actually selling, well, you know, there's going to be this offer to fly here or this offer to fly here. And uh, from for this point in time, I believe that this is the right way to do it. Dave? Yeah, I mean, one of, the, one of the biggest things in sales is ultimately what you sell is certainty. You sell the certainty that when you work with somebody, the job gets done. You don't need to know, you know, how they do the stuff on their planes, what kind of fuel they use, what kind of planes. Nobody cares. You just want to know that you're well looked after. You get from A to B in the best possible way. What they're doing right now is they realize nobody's going to get on planes until this is all fixed. But what we want to do is reinforce that we care about you. And so when you do start choosing, you'll choose us. It's a very smart way of doing it. It's very subtle and it's all marketing rather than sales, but it's very important to create that empathy. Ultimately, what we're doing with the show is we're trying to connect and help people. I mean, there may be people who turn around and say, we want to do business with you now or afterwards. That's always great. But at the same time, there'll be people who just feel better being stuck on their own and being stuck in the house. And at some point we'll meet them and they'll say, right, thanks for that. I recognize what you did uh, and that was great. Some people will watch this show every single day, and some people will just ch uh, jump in, watch one, feel better, disappear, and so on. So I think that one of the reasons that we decided to go every single day with this show was just to make sure we gave the best possible opportunity for people on a daily basis to clock in, step away from Netflix, get something that's live, it's real, and it's up to date, and get some knowledge of how they can move forward personally 
emotionally, spiritually, and their business as well. That's why we did this in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, in my in my eyes, what we are doing right now. We're um, just uh, in the face of what we're going to be doing, uh, what we are doing right now, helping people and assisting people and everything. Later on, we're going to also be covering, well, how to prepare for this. And this is exactly what I am doing with uh, with uh, all my uh, uh, customers and my prospects, the people that I was already dealing with. And this is another super tip that I want to give you. Instead of trying to, you know, go and try to, to get more customers, focus on the people that you already know, that already give you, that already know that you're somebody that provides some sort of value. Uh, because this is the time to super uh, to to super connect with them, and this is just one of those uh, really big tips. In fact, I mean, uh, because I know that some of uh, a lot of our people are right now. Um, a lot of the people that I have been uh, working with so far in the past years are watching the show. I invite you to reconnect with me, and I'll be very happy to to uh, to just look over your message, what you're doing, and possibly giving you some advice. How can we contact you, Ernesto? Uh, well, they can, uh, I'll show you, they, they, they can go, just go to Ernesto.today. So I think that would be the, the, uh, the best way to, uh, the best way to do it. Let me just see if I can just put it here. Uh, yeah, there we go. You can just go to Ernesto.today and then you can contact me either by uh, WhatsApp. WhatsApp will be the actually the absolutely best way uh, for you to, to connect with me. And uh, Dave, how are you? How are you reinventing yourself? Okay, thank you for asking. Um, one thing I was just going to say before I talk about how I'm reinventing myself: uh, we're getting close to Ramadan, which uh, on the Islamic calendar is a very important month of reflection and closeness and family. And similarly, during that time, people who don't understand what it means, it's like Lent. It's like thirty days of of, of Lent uh, for Christians. Um, it's a time when some people get very frustrated about they can't get business done because people aren't interested in sitting down with them. But instead, what you do is you get close to families and you deliver gifts and you get and you, you create relationships. And then after that's done, that's when things turn into business because people remember. So this is very similar to that kind of time. Um, and that happens every year. And I've experienced that for 25, 26 years of being in Dubai. For my own side, my main business is two things. I train people how to be an international keynote speaker. And I also... I'm an international keynote speaker, so I travel around the world speaking for big corporations and events, uh, hosting big events as well, and getting people to be uh, able to do the same kind of thing. So right now, I, always, I already have a coaching business, so I'm used to speaking to people all around the world online. Um, tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, I've got a dear friend, Monique. I'll be working with her straight away. I've got people all through the day that I'm going to be doing coaching sessions with, politicians and so on. As for my ability to go out and hold an event with a room full of people, going online is the key. Doing motivation through webinars and through a Zoom and so on, reaching people in their home. And I'll tell you why it's so important to do it right now is because many people are used to working from home. You'd be surprised how many people work from home on a weekend uh, and connect with people. It's kind of agile already. But I don't think anybody's been in a lockdown situation to experience it where they have no choice. So for many organizations, they will lose a lot of staff. And a lot of staff are really scared because they're just wondering, okay, I've got my money now, but will it stay forever? Should I leave? Should I do something else? And I think that the key to it is for people to understand that there are options um, as well as staying in the business. You can be exactly where you are, but it means that reinvention that you talked about earlier. I'll be talking... Um, in depth about how to reinvent your business um, and I think what we should do before that is just mention about Japan and then uh, we can talk about that in a few moments time and uh, then I'll tell everybody how to reinvent your business uh, in four simple steps and I think for that if people want to start making some notes I think it'd be very beneficial because it's based on how to do it before you spend money. That's, uh, that's great Dave. Uh, right, I mean, uh, right now we are getting a, uh, we go back to you in a second, but we're just getting a call right now. As you were saying, somebody actually working from home, which is also a speaker, and uh, we're getting our correspondent, uh, Munir Al Busaidi, just uh, uh, straight from uh, straight from Abu Dhabi. So uh, let's just uh, hear what Munir has uh, has to share with us. So, 
Let me see. Uh, Munir, are you there? Who loves to entertain audiences and, and speak to people live in person, something that I'm very passionate about and helping people. I've literally had to change a lot of the ways in which I work and, uh, you know, I've kind of had to transfer to a more digital way of, um, of speaking to people. I have multiple cameras, so I had to get, get clued up on technology really quickly. But also, you know, um, being more mindful of different people's situations and, and uh, you know, putting out content that is really helpful to people, you know, free content where people are experiencing more stress and anxiety than ever before. So giving them, giving, you know, sharing techniques and strategies of how to deal and overcome with the stress and anxiety and, and turn that into productivity and gratitude, actually. And uh, also getting more creative in terms of how I entertain audiences, you know, being in a room where you don't get people laughing uh, and you can't feed back on the audience. But how can I find ways of entertaining audiences? And, and you know, I've, I've been quite creative. No, you haven't. What, like, um, Shefola, please, like, I'm trying to make a video right now and you're not helping. She's not wearing any pants. Um, I am, I am. I just want to let you know that I am totally wearing pants. I, I will show you, but I don't have to because I don't, I don't have to. So, uh, anyhow, I'm going to cut this short. Really, he's not. It's, it's terrible down there. It's a nightmare. Help. Okay, anyhow, uh, I'm going to move swiftly on. Uh, yes, completely had to redefine how I do everything. But I'm going to hand over back to you, Dave and Ernesto, in the studio, and I'll catch you on a video very soon. <laughs> so what do you think of that craziness talking about reinvent um, Munir is a dear friend and I love him dearly and I think he needs to get checked out as soon as this is over for other reasons anyway but it's great that he's shared that with us Munir's a really talented guy he's a comedian he's a hypnotherapist uh, and he's also a digital expert so um, he does regular shows like we're doing uh, online, you can catch up with him there as well. But but he's 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 been sharing some some input to our show as well, for which we're eternally grateful. But that's great. Thanks, Manir. You rock. Yeah. <laughs> and you can don't give up the day job. I'm a puppet. I don't need to ever see that again. <laughs> <laughs> ever. Hey, Dave. On uh, on uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you in a little bit of uh, of uh, uh, time uh, pressure. So can you? Quickly, uh, you know, tell us the tell us the steps, and then I think we have to definitely uh, make sure that we cover more in depth what you are doing because I think uh, more than anything, I you know that I have to. I mean, even though that we have been friends for for twenty five years, I uh, I still have tremendous uh, uh, respect and uh, admiration for everything you do and how you actually help people. So I think just by, by cutting you short in time because uh, of uh, running out of time on the show, it doesn't make uh, justice to what you're going to be saying. So run us here on uh, just a, a short sample of uh, how you're actually helping your, your uh, customers. And then let's make it a point that uh, during the following week, we're also going to be covering this more in depth. Okay, so what you want me to do is a bit more about what I'm helping my customers with. Well, you you were going to mention four points. I mean, you, I, I mean, okay, got you. I, I would like to, I would like to basically, you know, put the the, uh, you know, the light on you because uh, what you have been doing and, and all the stories that you tell me uh, while we are having uh, conversations. I mean, they they are completely inspiring of how you're helping other people, uh, you know, reinvent themselves right now and how you're helping uh, uh, people in the industry like politicians like uh, uh, show business people and uh, also uh, the Dave Crane uh, himself so we would like to to um, to hear a little bit more about you but once again I'll keep on talking and I don't let you talk so please <laughs> yeah thanks talk. goodbye <laughs> All right, thank you. I'll, I'll tell you very briefly what I do then. I work with a number of different people at the top level and all levels really about reinventing themselves. To become an effective speaker, you've got to have a different mindset. Most people have a fear of public speaking and so the ability to go up on stage is something that they can't even imagine. But with effective stagecraft training, you can do. Now, the ability to get up and, and speak is not too dissimilar from the ability to post on social media. And I think that the evolution that everyone's going to go through now is not just because there's going to be a lot less gigs 
immediately because people won't go into crowded halls. But that will change in a couple of months' time. But right now, you've got an ability to connect with people online and create a brand new way of communicating with them. But if you can't generate content, you can't think about who you are and what you do, there's a real challenge to be able to even go to those levels. Now, why is this important? And why is it not just a small niche of people who want to become speakers? Because right now, we're going for a reinvention of everything that we've experienced in terms of business. And so, whatever you do, whether it's a side hustle job that sits alongside your existing job, or something that you do as your main job, the more you can communicate, the more you can champion who you are and what you do, the better the opportunities that people will see you as an expert and then want to do business with you. So if you can talk and represent, people like to do business with people rather than with organizations. So for instance, when you talk about Apple, even though he's passed away for many years, it's still Steve Jobs. When you talk about Virgin, it's still Richard Branson. Facebook, still Mark Zuckerberg, and you can throw as many other names at it as you want, but they represent their brand. And now's a time when with social media, it blends really well for people to find their personality, their message, and their ability to communicate. So I spend a lot of time building marketing businesses for speakers with business models that allow them to reinvent themselves. For instance, I've got a client I'm working with tomorrow afternoon, and uh, that client's is now talking to schools about how they can reinvent what they used to do in the classroom more effectively um, through doing it um, online. Because if they don't get it right, they will lose a large amount of their students who just won't come back again. And so um, to do that, you have to declare yourself to be an expert. You also have to be an expert at it. Now, most of us actually are. So it's a case of how do you get that message put together and how do you get that to people? And we have maybe, say, I would say about 20 to 40 different types of business connections that you have with people that take different sorts of conversations and versions of you. Whether it's a webinar, or it's a boardroom, or it's a one-to-one, -one, or it's a sales, or it's going out to meet or host an event, or meet dignitaries, or look after children. All of those have different communication styles. And I've been in the business for, for many, many decades. I would say so from about the age of three, and you can see there's gray everywhere. So I've had experience of all these different things. And what I love about it is it's not about me being a star. It's about teaching people how they can be stars, how they can dominate their industry, become recognized by everybody as being the best of what they do just by talking. And so that's what I find exciting. I think right now is a perfect time for people to be able to do that and find themselves and communicate their message to the world. That's great. Uh, Dave, where can I ask uh, people to contact you? And, and, and this is a very important question because when you were asking me that, I didn't send them to my, uh, you know, my website talking about me. That's absolutely not the case. And it is it's the, same, the same case here with you. I shared my uh, own contact uh, website and that's what I want you to share, Dave. Where can they actually find your, uh, all your details, all your uh, WhatsApp, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, very simply, if you go to a website called www.thedavecrane.com, and you can see it there on the screen. If you go to that, that um, um, page, www.thedavecrane.com, it's just got my contact details on. Everything from websites to messenger to phone number to WhatsApp. And, and the best way to do it is WhatsApp. I live on my WhatsApp all the time. Emails, I don't check that often, to be honest with you, um, unless I'm looking for one. WhatsApp means it's immediate. I can see it, and I can... You know, can respond to people very very quickly and so anybody who's got any inquiries and going i don't know what you mean i'm not sure or i'm going through challenges it's well between myself and ernesto we do this for a living we actually work on branding and creating uh, effective business people and getting them out there onto stages and now online as well so talk to me and i'll pass you on to ernesto if it's more suited to him and talk to ernesto if he'll pass it on to me if it's more suited and if neither of us can do it we're connected to so many industry experts. I mean, through LinkedIn alone, I've got, what, 57,000 people. If it's something more suited to one of my friends and connections, I'll just directly connect you. Right now is the time for this community to come together and help everybody. And I won't lose anything by that. I'll be more than glad to get you to the right person to connect you to get your own success to work. Yeah, I think uh, on, on my side, what I would be very happy is to look at your web, to, not, not your website, but to look at your business and help you know what is, uh, how you have to brand yourself right now and what is what you have, to, how you have to brand yourself uh, afterwards. Uh, just, uh, just to close the show, 
I want to uh, actually uh, uh, go to something that Dave was uh, brilliantly uh, showing me yesterday. I went through it and I said, wow, this is creativity and reinvention at the best. Google immediately, they responded super, super fast to, uh, you know, what is happening right now. You cannot go to the zoo. You cannot take the kids to the zoo. So Google said, this is, this is what I tell you. If you think of these kind of things, like the teacher that was doing the Zumba, uh, you know, to the entire neighborhood, or how you can do these kind of things, this is the kind of thing that we uh, like doing. You know, we have to think outside of the box and help people. And this is exactly what Google did. So yesterday I, I got a message from Dave and said, well, you know, you can actually bring the zoo to your uh, home. And I said, how does that work? So let me just uh, show you this video. Here's my son, uh, Vincent, and you can see him. He, uh, there's, uh, this is our home, and here we have a uh, tiger uh, where he's actually petting and he's uh, uh, kissing him. And it's a virtual, uh, it's a virtual animal which uh, it is there in your home. So Dave, possibly you can actually tell them how that works because I think that's just absolutely fascinating. Yeah, it's amazing. There's a number of different animals that you can you can work with on this, uh, and you can find them um, from lion to penguin to to dog to rabbit to eagle. You put it into Google, and it will come up with a number of different images as a normal search. But what will also pop up is a view in 3D as a button. I think it's a, in in a blue circle. And you click on that, and what it does is you have to hold it down for a little bit before it responds. But once it starts responding, it's very effective because it creates, it takes a little while to download the software to, to find out, and you might have to walk, walk around slightly or move your phone slightly in your living room so, pe so it can pick up the lighting of it. And then it starts transposing the, the creature that you've chosen into your living room. It's very exciting, it looks beautiful, uh, it's very cool. And uh, I think that if you've got kids in the house who are bored crazy, especially for younger kids, you can give them this option to play with and they can start creating their own zoo. And okay, it's gonna cost you because it's gonna mean that they won't give you their phone back. But the list of, of creatures that you can use, lion, tiger, cheetah, shark, hedgehog, duck, emperor, penguin, wolf, anglerfish, goat, rottweiler, snakes, eagle, brown bear, alligator, Horse, Shetland pony, macaw, pug, turtle, cat, octopus, dog, and golden retriever. How do you remember all of that? Day? I'm How good. Do you remember all I'm of that? so good. It's all in here. I never forget. And you still owe me ten dollars. On what that for? note, for, I, I don't have to talk about it right now, but you know you do. I remember everything, Ernesto. Moving on, but I won't forget. Um, okay. Just as a passing note. Okay, Japan. well, I would love, I, I would love you guys if you actually do that, create some videos and share them with us in yes. your uh, in our community, which is uh, bit.ly, give me paper. Uh, and uh, I think it'll be really awesome to see some of those videos with uh, with this discovery that, uh, uh, that Dave has done. Share with us, how are you reinventing uh, your business? What are you thinking? What is your messaging ideas? And we will be happy to explore them with you. Uh, I think we are running out of time. Dave, do one you have thing, something else? One thing just before I finish, because I did promise to talk about it, and that's Japan, and why Japan has recovered faster than most other countries. And the thing is, Japan naturally has a thing about hygiene, cleanliness, and 60% of Japanese people wear masks naturally when they go out. And so there's hand sanitizers everywhere. Their attitudes are having a cold. Is you wear your mask anyway. And so what's happened is their restaurants, their parks, their businesses, their offices, everything is open as normal within a very short amount of time because the changes that we're going through, having to lock ourselves in and clean our hands more, that's built in naturally to Japanese culture, even to wearing masks at home. And so when something like this comes along and scares everybody, the whole world shuts down, this will be the new direction I think many people will take. And it's natural for Japan and for their culture to actually have that. So the faster we take it on, the more we can just recover faster, like the, the amazing people in Japan as well. That is, uh, that is a great point, and I think it's uh, absolutely Japan is... Uh, a country that we have to be learning from. So 
Uh, once again, let's just uh, finish the the, uh, the show for today. Join us tomorrow at noon uh, Central Daylight uh, Time in the United States, or what time in Dubai? It's uh, 9 o'clock normally, but it's 9.46 now, so we have talked quite a lot. But we are speakers, so that's what we expect. <laughs> share this show, by the way. Share it with your friends. Tell the world. Let's get more people helped by doing Absolutely. this. Let's get the message out. Well, this has been episode number 10 from uh, the uh, Toilet Paper Diaries. See you tomorrow, uh, same uh, time. Bye-bye.